These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. All right, so uh, this week you guys are going over uh, interference and diffraction? Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are uh, wave phenomena. So we have to go back and review some key ideas about waves. So uh, last week we were doing optics, right? And optics uh, is also about light. <coughs> Uh, but in optics, we just treat the light as basically traveling in straight lines that sometimes bend, right? We just treat the light as traveling in straight lines that, that sometimes bend. That is, we didn't really focus on the fact that light was a wave. So it turns out that sometimes uh, the wave characteristics of light are important and sometimes they're not. So for the geometric optics that we did last time, uh, you don't need to think about the fact that uh, light is a wave. Uh, but for the material in this chapter, uh, you always have to be thinking about the fact that light is a wave. So we have to review a couple key ideas about waves. Um, and this kind of takes us back to the first semester again. So do you remember, what does it mean for uh, So what we're going to be especially thinking about is the interaction between two waves, uh, or multiple waves. We're going to be thinking about how, how two or more waves can interact. So do you remember, what does it mean if we say that two waves are in phase with each other? Overlap in what way? So you probably have the right mental picture in your head. So two waves are in phase if they both are, are cresting together and they're both troughing together. So of course a wave is an oscillation. So it's constantly going from crest to trough to crest to trough. But if two waves are cresting simultaneously, then they're in phase. So. So would these waves be in phase? Yeah. Yeah, if, if I was able to draw well, they would be anyway. So I was trying to get the two crests to occur at the same time. So here's the two crests occurring at the same time. And I'm trying to get the two troughs to occur at the same time. So these two waves uh, would be uh, in phase. So these are in phase. say that these are 180 degrees out of phase. So the top wave and the bottom wave are completely in phase. <laughs> and the middle wave and the bottom wave are 180 degrees out of phase. What's the relationship then between the bottom wave and the top wave? Same thing. 180 degrees out of phase because these two are the same as each other. Okay. Um, so those are uh, some important ideas. Now, of course, these are not the only two options. Um, the two waves could be, say, partially in phase or partially out of phase. Um, but for this chapter, we're mainly just going to focus on the two extreme cases and not focus on the intermediate thing. So we'll usually just focus on waves that are completely in phase and waves that are 180 degrees uh, completely out of phase. All right. Now we're going to focus on what happens when um, uh, we can have, say, a screen. Or actually, maybe before we do that, 
we should talk about how waves get into or out of phase. So let's say that um, at uh, so a wave is something that goes from one place to uh, another place. So let's say that uh, at the beginning of our experiment, wave A and wave B are in phase. Wave A and wave B are in phase with each other. And let's say that they're both going in straight lines an equal distance until they get to this point at the end. So here's our end points, and here's our start points. So I'm not actually drawing the wave anymore, I'm just drawing the path that the wave is following. If they started in phase and they're going the same distance, will they end in phase? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that, that's kind of intuitive. Uh, if two waves start in phase and they travel the same distance each other, as each other, then they're going to end up in phase as well. Maybe uh, one thing I should make clear here is that all along here, we're talking about two waves that have the same wavelength. Two waves of the same type that have the same, uh, that have the same uh, wavelength. That's what this whole chapter is about. So uh, if two waves have the same wavelength and they start in phase, then they're going to end up in phase uh, as well. Let's think about that a little bit more. So let's say that at this point, they were both cresting. At this point, both waves are cresting. And then let's say, we move a distance of one wavelength. And now we look at what the wave looks like after it's moved a distance of one wavelength. Well, what would it be like here? Cresting, troughing, or equilibrium? That's what a wavelength means. A wavelength is the distance it takes to get to the next crest. So um, if, they, uh, if this wave started cresting, and then you look at it after it's traveled, one full wavelength, it'll be here. So to make that clear, let's say the wavelength is, uh, say, uh, 12 meters. If the wavelength is 12 meters, then after the first 12 meters, um, both waves will be cresting again. And how about here when we get to the 24 meter mark? Yeah, that would be cresting again. Put another C for cresting again. So the important idea here that we'll need later on is every time a wave travels a complete wavelength, it reaches the same point that it started at. Every time a wave travels a, string, a, a complete wavelength, it's back to the same point in the oscillation that it started at. So maybe it's always easiest to imagine that it starts at a crest. Uh, that, that won't hurt us in any of the problems we're doing. So if we imagine that we're starting at a crest, then after a complete wavelength, you'll be back to another crest. All right, now how about at the six meter mark, how would you describe the wave then? That's, the That's right, because again, we're assuming that it started at a crest. Well, six meters is only half a wavelength, so at the six meter mark, it would be at a trough. When would the next trough be? Um, oh, so number six or eighteen. Right. Actually, you'd have to add six twice there, because the first six would get you back to the crest, and then another six would get you to the trough over here. Okay. Uh, all right. So here's another trough. Uh, and when's the next trough? Thirty meters. And when's the next crest after that trough? Okay, so these seem like some pretty simple ideas, uh, but they actually can be quite useful when we're working on these uh, interference problems. All right, and that explains why, uh, I got a little ahead of myself before, but that explains why if both of these waves started uh, in phase with each other, and they both go the same distance, they should still be in phase. Um, uh, as each other, because the point you are in your wave just depends on what distance you travel relative to the wavelength. 
Now again, we could be more subtle and we could say that, say here, uh, we're at equilibrium and here we're between trough and equilibrium, but for this chapter, we're mainly just going to focus on crests and troughs, so that's good enough.